All right, guys, I'm going to do a <clears throat> couple of short videos because I don't want to edit them together right now. But you see we've got the top of the uh, motor taken apart. We've got the valve cover off of it. We've got the rocker arm assembly off of it. The uh, oil pan is also taken off of the bottom. Some other various pieces are taken apart. So <clears throat> we were talking about this motor before. It's not running right. We thought originally that the cam to crankshaft gears were mismatched. They weren't meshed correctly. We took the front of the motor apart, took the kind of timing cover off, and looked at those. They're meshed up properly, but it's still not running right. And what we did after we took the uh, oil pan off the bottom of it, we rotated it around, pulled the spark plugs out, and we rotated it around to see where it was kind of acting up. What we found is, with the spark plugs out, <clears throat> it feels like it has compression. When you turn it over, you can feel it like bind up, like it has compression, and then it'll move past it and free up, and then it'll tighten up again and move past it. I mean, it literally feels like the spark plugs are in it. As you can see, there's no spark plugs in it right now. So, <clears throat> one of the things that I did is I took an old pulley apart, and I created a, a tool for turning it. Instead of putting the nut back on the front of it, Took the center out of an old pulley, so I have the keyway here, and on the other side, I ground it to a 36 millimeter socket size. So I can stick this on the crankshaft, and that keyway will line up with the Woodruff key down there, and then I can spin it and see where it's at. So here's what we ran into. When you have the crankshaft in such a position that the number one and number four pistons, which are equal to each other, are all the way up or all the way down, and two and three, which are paired with each other, are in the opposite position. So they have one and four up, two and three down, or rotate 180 degrees and it'll be vice versa. That's when it's the freest. When you rotate it so that you know one is going up and two is coming down, when they get to the middle of the stroke, that's when it binds up, which is really kind of weird that it would bind there because we thought maybe there was something in the head that, you know, when one of the pistons was going up, it was like bumping up against and making it hard to go over its, its top dead center. And that's not the case. There's nothing in the cylinders. We've run the bore scope down in there. We can see that the cylinders are clear. Um, <clears throat> so we're not really sure what's up with that. A couple of things we do know is up with this is the number one cylinder has zero compression. And that's expected. We know that there's a problem with the, uh, the seat for the valve on that particular cylinder. Um, during the assembly of the motor, it, it was, there was no machine shop available. So <clears throat> it wasn't able to be ground and, and put in the way it needed to be. Um, the guy that built it was hoping that he had done it well enough to get some compression out of it. And with the initial time we ran it, we got a little bit, but right now we've got none. So we know that that's going to have to be done. Not a big deal. Uh, two and three have 135 PSI. They're great. Number four's got 120 PSI. So we've got fairly good compression on all but one cylinder. You know, that's, again, something we can figure out. But it doesn't explain why it's binding up mid-stroke. So what we're doing now is we're taking the head off of the motor because there's a suspicion that the pistons are pointed the wrong direction. So let me grab a piston real quick. No. This is <clears throat> not the piston to this particular motor, but I have a couple laying around. So you can see in this particular piston, there's a little notch right here. I'm going to turn it this way. So when you assemble any given motor, most of the pistons will have some sort of marking on one end that all point the same direction. Usually it's all towards the front of the motor, so each piston would be lined up the same way. In some engines, it's they're all pointed to the back. You have to look at your book and figure out which particular motor you're building and how they want it done. So the suspicion is that if one of these pistons is in the wrong way, that it would be binding the connecting rod. So 
the connecting rods should be marked, usually here on the shoulders, with a one, two, three, or four, so that they're in the right place. And when you take the connecting rods apart, you should always put the cap back to the rod that it came off of. Most of them won't go to any other rod. They're usually machined pretty well. They have uh, differences in the uh, contact surface here. Some of the older motors, you can mix and match them. You're not supposed to, it's not a good idea. So that's something that we're going to check when we take this motor apart. Um, from what we can tell from a visual in inspection underneath, they are matched, but like this particular piston, it's gonna be hard to tell. There's actually no markings on this one. So I don't know if this particular cap goes to this connecting rod, but the rest of the motor's been scrapped long ago, so it doesn't matter. This is just for display purposes. Um, we also want to make sure that um, <clears throat> there's nothing going on with the top of the pistons. From what we can tell with the bore scope, there's nothing going on with them, but you can't really see well through the F-head motor because going in the spark plug, there's a shelf there where the valve uh, are that you have to kind of go in and then go down into the piston. And the bore scope head is the rigid parts really too long to kind of go through all the corners really well. So currently right now we have all of the bolts and nuts taken off of the top of the motor except for one and I kind of want to point this one out to you. I don't know if you can see it on camera very well but in this particular motor the carburetor sits right here. Well underneath the carburetor in this little throat hole right here there's another bolt and this one gets skipped a lot. So when you go to take these motors apart, don't forget to look down in here and take this bolt out. And then, in theory, the head should come off. If you've got a really good head gasket, you may have to fight with it a little bit. You may be able to put a crowbar underneath here. Try not to mess up the machine surfaces too much. But <clears throat> this one gets overlooked quite a bit. So I'm going to take this one off, and then we're going to see if we can pull the head off of it. And I'll talk to you guys later.